Welcome to our live video series. Today we are taking a look at the 2023 Kia Sportage, which is all new, just introduced, and the 2022 Hyundai uh, Tucson Essential. So this is an LX model of the Sportage, an Essential model there. What that means is it's essentially, essentially, these are the base trim levels of each of these cars. And I'm doing this for multiple The most obvious one is they're both in stock. They happen to be the same color. They happen to be the same basic trim. And we can show you some of the differences between the two. And they are very similar. They share a platform. They share an engine. They share a transmission. They share a lot of different things. But there are some key differences between them. And one may suit you more than the other. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So if you've never joined us live before, what we're going to do is if you just, and you're not live with us and you want to get to the content of this video, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark. That'll be where we get going with the content. Uh, the rest of uh, you, if you're live with us, you can stick around. And if you want to stick around for a second, I'll show you how to join us live as well. We'll talk about some news and notes as well. I'm suffering here. I'm trying to figure this all out. All right, here we go. Okay. So if you want to join us live, go to our YouTube channel at two o'clock Eastern on a weekday and you just refresh the page. And you can see that we have a standard video down here. When I refresh the page, it is going to be replaced with right there. There is our live video. You can see it says live. We're gonna click into that. As we do that, you're gonna to have to watch a quick little ad. I'm gonna to try to skip it for a second. All right. And while you're uh, skipping that ad with me, um, just wanna run a quick little ad for the three dealers that support this channel. Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, and Owen Sound Hyundai. They're the three dealers that support us. And uh, if you're looking to buy in Ontario, there'll be a link in the description where you can contact me. I will connect you with our team and we'll take things from there. We'll treat you like family, it'd be good. And I tell you right now, we are busy. A lot of you guys are uh, clicking in and trying to get these cars and uh, that's great. So uh, we'll try to help you out. All right, news and notes. Oh boy, I didn't uh, ramble on enough. I got another minute to kill of news and notes. Big news is that tomorrow, no, sorry, Thursday this week, I'm going to do an official sort of training session on the um, Kia Sportage. But more importantly, I'm going to drive the hybrid version of that. I've been told that that hybrid uh, version will be announced in Italy. I may have information on it as early as today. So we will have um, a lot of... Uh, information on the hybrid version of this and we'll talk about the hybrid and availability of trims and that kind of thing uh, in some of these uh, vehicles as we get to that three minute mark but just so you guys know uh, I should still be live for a two o'clock video on Thursday I'm not sure what we'll do that day uh, but I will be definitely very busy in the morning and hopefully uh, well I will be seeing and driving the uh, Sportage hybrid and I'm hoping that I can have a video on that. So we'll see if we, we can do that or not. Uh, Hyundai news, not a whole lot of Hyundai news right now. Um, I'm sure there are some, but uh, I didn't prepare any for this video. So we'll make sure that tomorrow or something like that, we cover some of that as well. All right, if you haven't, if you're regular with us, if you haven't hit the like button, do me a favor, hit the like button and let's get going with this video right now. All right, three minutes in. What are we looking at? First of all, 2022 and 2023, let's clarify that. The 2023 Sportage has just been released. I know it says 2023 and I get it. I don't know why it's a 2023. It's the way they do things. Um, model gears are kind of just names really. And um, that's what it is. It's a 2023 Sportage, but it's the current model year, brand new Sportage versus the current model year, brand new Tucson. Now I just want to clarify one quick thing for those of you who are just joining us. I'm gonna say Sportage, all video. I'm not gonna say Sportage because we happen to film in Canada and that's what it's called here and in other parts of the world. So if you're an American and it bothers you, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments because that's usually what happens, but uh, you don't have to comment about that. I'm sorry, that's what we call it. All right, so what we're gonna do today is go through driver's seat to driver's seat, rear seat to rear seat, trunk space to trunk space. And of course you can see the specs. So when we talk about specs of like, for instance, trunk space and leg room and headroom and all those kinds of things. We're gonna show you what those are with an actual person an actual trunk measurement tool that we have. Uh, Cause just because you can fill something with certain many liters or cubic feet of space in the trunk, doesn't always mean it's practical space. We're gonna try to show you the comparisons. There are some key differences between these two as well. And we'll try to point those out, uh, but there's a lot of similarities. Both models we have today are white. The Tucson white is a little whiter. Um, I don't know if it's richer, brighter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whereas uh, you can kind of see it in my video on my camera here, but there is a slight tone difference to the colors, which I never would have assumed had I seen them apart. But when I saw them side by side, a little bit brighter white, um, still what you would consider to be a normal bright white here as well on the Sportage. So, all right, let's go digging through and we'll cover everything that we can. Now, interestingly, we've got two different keys here. And they're both jackknife style keys. So I've got them jackknifed out right now. Uh, in the Hyundai lineup, when you have a key like this, the keyless key, so the um, regular key fob and you move up the trims, is a different style key. It looks a little higher class than this. In the Kia version, it's basically exactly the same key as you have here, but um, a hair thinner, fingers to thumb there. 
um, and then it is keyless as well. So both these are keyed cars. And again, remember, we're looking at the base level trims of these with all wheel drive. So, um, you know, two cars uh, that are very competitive. And let's just quickly Sportage. We can see it starts at around 28 only says that 28,395. It is actually 30,395 that we have today. So I can just show you that right here. If you come along there, 30,395 uh, is the actual price of today's Kia. And then if we go to the Tucson, same idea over here. The Tucson Essential starts at 27,899. So right in the same ballpark. And then we're going to select that and we're going to choose a $2,000 option package, which is, oops, we've got to go next. There we go. Uh, which is the all-wheel drive. So we're going to choose that, and then it brings you up a couple grand from there. So that's the two cars we're looking at. Let's go take a look. One thing I will point out, both of these cars are capable of towing. Interestingly, and I don't think this is a typo, the Tucson can tow 3,500 pounds. This one can tow 2,500 pounds, the Sportage. It's one thing that I, I was wondering if it's a typo. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I would tow 3,500 pounds, like right up to the max, but they are rated differently for towing, and I haven't been able to figure out why. I'm going to try to figure out that uh, on Thursday when I go talk to the Sportage people and go from there. Both of these cars share a platform. What that means is most cars are built on a platform. A lot of the wiring harnesses will be shared. A lot of the components will be shared. Uh, these cars are actually have a modified platform, which also is shared with the Santa Cruz. So uh, those are the three vehicles in our lineup that share this platform. So again, same, same, same. We're going to start with the Tucson. Tucson has been out a little bit uh, longer than the um, Sportage. So we'll start over here and we'll move our way through. Jumping into the Tucson, for a base level trim, it still feels fairly high class. You've got the nice sort of piano black trim through here. Um, you've got the nice padded armrest in here, which uh, not every car has. And, uh, you know, power windows, power locks, power mirrors, tilt telescopic steering wheel. Um, it's not a leather-wrapped steering wheel in this car, and that makes sense because it's not the heated steering wheel, but it still is a sort of higher class, uh, you know, very similar steering wheel to the higher end. Interestingly, in the Tucson, what they do is the higher trims of this car are hybrid vehicles. So in this particular car, it's not a hybrid. It's a 2.5 liter four-cylinder that's shared with the Sportage. As you look, take a look at the dash here. Let me just turn the volume down, turn the fans down. There we go. As you take a look at the dash here, you've got an interesting design. They don't do this kind of um, dash in any other vehicle in the Hyundai lineup, and you'll find the same thing with the Sportage. It has a different dash again than this, which they don't do in any other vehicle in the Kia lineup. So left side uh, speedometer, right side tachometer, and it kind of swings backwards-ish um, in there. You haven't got a whole lot of graphics here, but you do have, uh, if I switch the drive modes here, you'll see that the drive mode changes there, and there's the outside where it goes to a um, green area. So Eco, normal, sport, and smart. So interestingly, there's an extra drive mode of the eco mode here. Normally, they just have the smart mode and no eco mode anymore. So the reason people uh, like the eco mode is if you're driving efficiently anyways, the eco mode drives well with you. Where I don't love the eco mode is if you try to get on the highway, the eco mode by default is going to resist downshifting, uh, and that can make it look, uh, or that can make it... Um, you know, sometimes you have to give it some gas, give it some more gas, and then it really revs up and goes, whereas the smart mode kind of figures that a little bit better. Smart mode is probably the best mode for fuel efficiency for most of your uh, driving needs, but it can depend. And then, of course, as we're switching through those drive modes, you can see the outside around the outside is changing color there as well. So smart there, um, go up to sport, go up to normal, and go to eco. So you do have some indications that are pretty cool. And then if I switch the terrain button here, which I'll do that, show you where that is later, you have snow, mud, and sand. So seven drive modes in this car. Uh, I believe the Sportage only has six. We'll just double check that in a second. Um, so again, analog gauges, but you do have a digital section, center section, very high resolution, color screen, a lot of information in here. You can go through all kinds of things. There's your all-wheel drive bar graph, which shows you how your... Um, all-wheel drive system is working, and it's essentially the same all-wheel drive system in both these cars. And uh, down here, driver attention alert. So just a lot of different things. And again, I like the digital speedometer up there. Uh, so we'll come across to the center. Piano black trim through here. Let me just, uh, it looks, again, higher end. I drive a top-of-the-line Santa Cruz. My Santa Cruz has an autumn, uh, Santa Cruz and the, uh, and the Tucson share an interior for the most part. So my top-of-the-line Santa Cruz has the automatic air here, and same with the top-of-the-line Tucson. Um, and you can get a larger 10 and a quarter inch screen here, but this is the 8 inch screen. And the reason you're going to like the 8 inch screen is because of this function right here. To start connecting Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, press this widget. What that means is this is wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. A lot of you prefer um, a wireless type system. 
Um, and that's what comes in these smaller screens. When I say smaller, it's still a large, large 8-inch screen, but um, the largest screens in this car do not have the wireless function. So uh, both Kia and Hyundai right now, that's the way it works. You do have sort of a volume knob here. It's a wheel there and a volume tuning wheel there. And uh, of course, your radio here is AM, FM, but it also has HD radio in there, which is kind of nice. And uh, there are a couple little menu items in here that are kind of cool. Voice memo, quiet mode, which can turn off the rear speakers and uh, sort of keep the front speakers a little quieter if you want to have people in the back sort of sleeping or doing something there. So again, uh, buttons over here, radio, media, and the star button. I like to set up this star button to bring up your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You can use it for other things as well. Down here, pretty easy to understand climate controls, the buttons... The knobs, I mean, we've seen these. I don't really think I need to explain that. Down here, the gear shift knob. Now, this is a rubbery gear shift knob. Some cars will have it leather up here, but this gear shift is shared with the Elantra, shared with the Santa Cruz, shared with many vehicles in the lineup. Um, higher trims, of course, don't have the shifter. They have the push buttons, and um, that's only in the hybrids, right? So down here, two USB ports on the outside, regular a uh, typical USB ports, not the USB-C, and a 12 volt in the center. And down here is a rubberized pad. There's no wireless charge pad on this trim level. Some other trim levels, you can get that. So uh, somebody says, I want to get to the Sportage. No problem. We're going right there soon. When I was switching the drive and terrain modes, I was pressing this button to switch between drive and terrain, and, drive and, terrain, and I was toggling this up and down to uh, switch them as well. You do have electronic parking brake on this car, and you do have heated seats. So that's a basic overview. One other th quick thing I want to point out, um, lane keeping assist and lane follow assist. This car can keep itself centered in the lane are standard on this car as well, which basically means this car is capable of essentially steering for itself. You're still responsible for where it goes and what it does, uh, but you can get down a, you know, a drive down the road, it can see the lane markers, can see various things and keep you centered in the lane when you press that button. So pretty good system there. Let's jump to the Sportage now and see what's different about that car as we get in there. So we're gonna do a full outside review. We're gonna do rear seat trunk space, but let's just keep here with the dash for a second and come through. All right, coming through here, same idea as far as it feels a little more upper class. Now down here, on here, you have hard plastic on the uh, Sportage. So you had the softer armrest on the uh, Tucson, the entry level, um, again, entry level Sportage only has the harder plastic. So you do have some pros and cons in each, and that would be, you know, maybe a con for some of us, depends on who you are. Uh, take a look here though. I think a lot of you are gonna view this as a pro. And I'm gonna get the key out of my pocket here. Let's do that. Stick the key in, stick it to the on position. This is a 12.3 inch screen in the cluster. So pros and cons of this, usually Kia, when they stick in a color display screen, has a different set of software here. Um, functionally, it's not a whole lot different than the Tucson, but visually, obviously it is. So as we take a look here, left side speedometer, right side tachometer, and it's a digital tachometer. And of course, if you switch through your drive modes here, you can change the, um, Oops, let me just go back. There we go. Sport mode, you can change the coloring over there. Um, so normal sport and smart are actually, oh, smart's purple, and I thought it would be blue, but there you go. Uh, purple, red, and purple again. Uh, so again, only three drive modes there instead of four. No eco mode on this one. And terrain, you have the same snow, mud, and sand, and no color change there. So while it is um, pretty, it's less functional than the higher end trims of the digital display screen, but it is visually impressive. It has some depth to it here. Um, there's some visual kind of, you know, plays tricks with your eyes and gives it some fake depth there, which is pretty good. And it is very clear, even though these are sort of, um, you know, the, the traditional old style uh, Timex watch kind of uh, font there, it, it's very precise. So it's very clear. Again, all wheel drive system in there. So basically the same type of, um, same type of software in the center here. The center display screen is kind of giving you that basically the exact same as what you had in the Tucson. Ignore fuel efficiency numbers. This car's been idling a lot. Um, but software through here, basically identical, right? Like we've seen all this before. So jumping over here, same stereo system, same radio system. Now again, higher end trims have a larger screen. The difference as you go higher end in the Sportage is... In the Sportage, this becomes another 12.3 inch screen, where in the Tucson, it would become a 10 and a quarter inch screen. So a little bit larger screen here. So where you give up on that hard armrest, you're gaining back in the oversized screen as you move up through the trim lines. And coming down here, you've got same idea um, as the other car, a little bit smaller knobs and buttons, uh, similar buttons, but smaller knobs for you know climate control down there. Obviously it's an identical type th system in here, but instead of having two regular USBs, you have a single USB, and an USB-C, and they're laid out in a little bit different order. You do have a USB-C here and then a 12 volt as well. And this is a plasticky as opposed to rubberized pad down there. 
Gear shift over here. We've seen this before in the original four-cylinder Kia Stinger uh, for, that came to Canada for one year. Uh, it's no longer in Canada. We also see this in the Kia K5, carried now through here to the Sportage. Coming down here, your drive and train modes. Uh, turn it there, press it there to switch between drive and train modes. Uh, so very easy to use there as well. And again, electronic parking brake with the auto hold. Interesting uh, system here with the cup holders is they can create a lot of space here. They show us with a, like an iPad in here or a larger item in here. And then if you want cup holders, you just switch just one or you can switch them both out there. And um, they work very well to just kind of give you a variety of space. Heated seats on this car are up over here. And again, no heated steering wheel, no ventilated seats. That's what those would be there as well. So again, a little more simplistic look because it's a lower trim, but you still have some nice uh, sort of metallic looking plastic trim there. And, um, you know, a different style vents, a little as asymmetry here. So you've got regular vents there and sort of the uh, passenger side vents there. Now coming across to the steering wheel, identical controls here. Lane follow assist is right here, um, right there. So it can keep you uh, centered in the lane. Automatic headlights are standard on both. We'll talk about headlights as we move up um, in a little bit later in the video in just a few seconds here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go take your questions. Uh, we got 76 people on. We should be able to hit, uh, let's go 65 likes today. So we got 47 so far, so we're not too far away. Uh, let's see if we can all hit that together. We'll get to 65 right now. I'm going to go take your questions. Then we're going to go rear seat space, trunk space, exterior review and lighting. Uh, talk about some differences there as well. And uh, we'll come through. So jumping out of the car, let's do that. All right. See, I saw some people writing some stuff, but I'm not sure if there are questions or not. So we'll try to go through as quick as we can here, um, answer a few of them, and then keep rolling through to the car. So what have we got over here? Um, no more tire rides videos lately. Yeah, you know what? Tire rides are hard to see, right? Hard to get right now. Is the Sportage, does the Sportage have a PHEV or EV? Not an electric vehicle. Uh, I'll give you some timing on the PHEV, which is expected to come at some point as soon as this year. Uh, but I'll give you some time on that after Thursday when I go speak with head office about these cars. And um, we can talk about some of that. Is it a screen? Looks like the middle part is a small screen. Yeah, it's, it looks digital screen-ish, but really that center display screen is your only true proper screen. It's a, it's a digital display more than a display screen, but it is that sort of 12.3 inch sort of size overall. So it's it's not exactly a full screen, If to be fair. The center piece of the screen, display screen on the Sportage. So. Um, why doesn't the new sport have a heads up display on a trim? I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't equip these cars. Somebody made the decision to have it or not have it, I guess. And uh, let me just see if I can scroll through here. Somebody says, I want to get the Sportage. And, uh, oh, somebody says sounds of nature. I didn't check for that. So we'll have to check that later. Uh, Tucson cluster looks very bulky, says one person. Okay. So again, these are the lowest trim cars. And I think the one thing we need to keep in mind is there's a zillion features you could put in these cars but they're trying to hit a price point and hit a balance between the lower vehicles in the lineup, something like the Seltos and the Kona, and the upper vehicles, something like the, um, uh, the Sorento and the Santa Fe. And they have to balance them in between and keep them on there. What can I use to keep the display, to clean the display? That's a great question. So what I do in my um, Santa Cruz, and this is sort of what I recommend, get a microfiber cloth, keep that microfiber cloth clean, keep it in your armrest, pull it out, give it a quick wipe down, and that alone should keep most of it clean, unless you've got really greasy, dirty fingers, and then you just want to use a very, very gentle cleaner, I suppose. Um, I would think what I use to clean my glasses would probably be safe on them, but I haven't tried that. Um, I'm not the expert. I keep a clean microfiber cloth. All right, we're going to go rear seat to rear seat, and the big thing you're going to notice with these cards is exactly that. It's a big thing. These are larger vehicles than their previous generation cars, and you start seeing that not so much in the front seat, but when you get to the rear seats here. So, rear seat here, you can see that the essential model is not as dark, in fact, not a tinted window here um, on the back side. So, you know, where you get a Pro on the Sportage, it has a tinted window, Con here, no uh, tinted window. You can get them tinted, obviously, but no factory tint on the rear seat, on the rear um, window on the lowest trim here. Coming in here, bottle holders in the door. Uh, this one happens to have some nice uh, floor mats in there, WeatherTech style floor mats that are Hyundai branded. So, um, let's jump in, I'll show you. Headroom is great. Now, a couple things. You can uh, tilt these seats back, and I could tilt them further, but there is a cargo cover in this vehicle. I don't think the cargo cover's standard. Uh, this is a vehicle that is uh, sold vehicle, so we'll be going out soon. Uh, I'll have to double check about that, but we'll, normally I could tilt this seat further back, but I have to move the cargo cover to do that. You do have an armrest here. A lot of Hyundai rear seats, they, um, you know, in the Elantra kind of thing, they take out the middle armrest. Uh, I don't have it in the Santa Cruz. I don't have it in some of the Elantras. You do have it here in the base level. Um, Tucson. And then of course you have great seats here. Your seats are 
high enough that I'm fully supported. And the legroom there is fantastic. No plastic back seats here. I am a bigger fan of the plastic back seats personally, but you guys may like cloth as well. Pockets on, not just one side, both sides. So uh, no center vents here. Sometimes you get those, uh, some people like those, but not on this trim line. And no uh, ports anywhere, again, on this trim line. So um, basically you're buying this car because it's functional, it's practical, and I think the rear seats are exactly that. They work very well for that. Now let's compare to the Sportage and see what we have right there. I'm gonna go driver's side again. Uh, as we flip around here, you can see there's a difference. These are the dark tinted rear glass here. Um, you've got the silver accented trims on both these cars. We'll show you that a little bit later as we take a look at the exterior. Now, entry level trim here, rear seats, same thing exactly back here for the general part. Now I'm gonna open the door just because I wanna keep it a little lighter in here. Uh, lots of headroom, got the armrest there as well. You have seats that can definitely tilt all the way back. So they're very good, just like the Tucson. Legs are on the seat and there's again, tons of uh, room there, not plastic back seats again. They do have the pockets on driver and passenger side. So we're doing things really well. And then you have one extra benefit here that you did not have in the Tucson. There's those center vents and they're quite large actually uh, in the uh, Sportage here. So a little bit of a pro there for the rear seats in the Sportage. All right, jumping out, we're gonna go trunk space now. Now, neither of these vehicles have the power operated trunk. Again, we'll look at some of the styling as we get uh, through a little bit later, uh, but you do have the ability to open that of course manually. And we'll do the same thing with this one. A little different uh, grab spot on both. Okay, floor mats are in there. You can lower these floors on both cars. In the Tucson here, you can lower it just a little bit right there. You do have a spare tire, even in this base trim. Uh, you can fold down the seats right there. This one has the cargo cover. I don't think that's standard. I do think that's an accessory in this car. Uh, 12 volt part right, port right here and uh, some tie downs as well. So just a pretty good equipped truck or trunk on a base uh, trim there. Keeping that floor in the top position, we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. We've got some floor mats down there. So we'll take a look over here. Another uh, spare tire underneath there. Again, you can lower the floor just around an inch or so over there. You've got the handles to pull down the seats. This is where that cargo cover is mounted. Again, I think it's an accessory in that car and I'll have to see what you can get in this car too. You could probably switch between the two vehicles. Uh, 12 volt port here, so identical, right? That's basically what we're looking at. So let's throw our teddy bear in and check out practical space. If you want one over the other for trunk space, it's really gonna be a toss up, it doesn't matter. Whatever they say in liters of space, uh, Teddy Bear is totally comfortable in here with plenty of space there for extra and you're gonna do the same thing over here in the Tucson. You've got just big square opening, you've got lots of space, low floors in both these cars. Practically speaking, these trunks are identical. I'm sure the specs will show you that one has more liters or less liters or more cubic feet or less cubic feet, but from a practical standpoint, there's no advantage size-wise between one trunk and the other. And that's what Teddy Bear is here for, to tell us that. All right, so what we're doing now is we're gonna take a look at the exterior and the lighting in both of these cars. Before we close it, let's just show you something that's kind of interesting. Trunk panel with the handle right here. There you go, close that down. Anything look familiar to you guys out there? Trunk panel with the handle right there. Obviously the power tail gets some same thing. So we're talking like a lot of nearly identical pieces there. So let's take a look at the lighting, the exterior styling, because I think that's really what it's gonna come down to for some people. Some people are gonna prefer one over the other purely based on styling. So we've got the key turn of the on, we've got the headlights on, on the uh, Tucson over here. And we're gonna do the same thing with the Sportage. Turn the headlights on. Little styling differences we'll talk about uh, right now. Start with the Sportage. Uh, let's turn the signal lights on on both as well. So left side signal and left side signal over here. All right. Jumping back here, Tucson, only one front window there, right? On the Sportage, a little different design with having just a little tiny bit of an extra window here. I like the visibility this gives, although I will say the forward visibility in both cars is excellent. Um, overall shape of these things are very similar, uh, but obviously the way they get to that shape is different. There's a lot of sharper lines in the um, Tucson, which you can kind of see here in the white paint. Uh, you know, just a real defined hard lines there. Uh, whereas on the Sportage, much more, you know, maybe clean, simple, maybe more traditional type side lines over here. Both have some dark plastic trim at the bottom. The Sportage at the base level trim here has a little bit of a metallic type accent, a, a you know, 
metal, it's plastic, but it looks like kind of a metal look. Whereas over there, it's just the plain plastic. Wheels, you can decide which ones you like better. They are the same size. So um, one over the other may uh, appeal to you. And then an interesting thing is the Sportage does have a roof rack and it's a very good roof rack very, from the very front to the very back, which we like to see. Um, big long roof racks are better and the Sportage has one. The Tucson at this trim level, you would have to add aftermarket uh, cross rails without the roof rails, which not my favorite thing to do. So, you know, pros and cons. Like I said, this one tows more, right? It's a tow an extra thousand pounds, even though it's the same engine, same transmission, and really same, same platform. Uh, but this one has the roof rails from the start. So there's your overall view on the side. On these trim lines, there's no signal lights in the mirrors that you would get on higher trim lines. Doesn't matter which trim we look at. And they really go with a unique face here. Now, unfortunately, I parked this vehicle a little close to the uh, wall here, but we're gonna do our best to show you anyways. Um, these lights are gonna flicker a little weird in the camera but um, they don't flicker in real life. Obviously these look like a grill kind of on this trim. On the lowest trim level, these aren't really tinted when they're off. So you do see them a little bit more when they're off or on the higher trim levels, you have sort of a chrome tinted, they blend in a little bit more. You still have LED lights here. The highest level Tucson does have a different style headlight. This is the MFR style headlight and there's a different style headlight, but they're LED either way. And it's the exact same idea with the Sportage. You can get a higher trim lines with a little bit different style headlights, but I think you're doing pretty good over here with the same type of headlights. Again, this light will look like it flickers every now and then on camera. It doesn't flicker in real life. Uh, for lower level trims, I think both of these have a really great face. Um, left side signal over here. It blends in just below the marker light. Again, headlights are there. These daytime running lights are right there. So left side signal there and left side signal over here again a little different look uh, there. Now in the higher trim lines, these are a little bit different uh, than that. So overall front styling, I think is pretty good. I wanna point out the silver trim at the rear. So in this one, that silver trim runs up along, there we go, up along over here, and then widens in that area there. For a base level trim, they could have done that in black plastic, but they didn't, they did nice silver. And you got the same thing here. Instead of running up along the top with the accent detail, Kia goes the opposite way and comes along the bottom with the accent detail and then a little bit larger silver type piece here. And they both have some character to it. You've got some, uh, you know, actual um, depth to that there. You can feel that uh, pattern there. It's not just a design that's done in. And same thing with the area over here. Rear lights on this car, again, higher trim levels have LED lights and the LED lights would carry right across here. These are just traditional lights and you have the signal down there. Over on this one here, you have LED lights in the marker lights. And standard signals here where you wouldn't have, you'd have LED in the higher trim lines. And again, um, you guys seem to like the lights together. So sometimes people who don't like the lights apart, I don't think that's a safety issue at all. We've talked about that a hundred times and why I think it's not an issue, but styling wise, some of you like it better here. So there you go. So which style do you prefer? It depends. Uh, if you're looking for rear wipers here, both of them have them, but instead of having them down here, where they would have it on traditional uh, SUVs, where they collect all of that ice in the wintertime and then you get the blade stuck. They're both, uh, both their uh, wipers are tucked up underneath the spoilers and they swing down. And by swinging down, they clean the window from up top and they also keep that wiper clear from snow and ice in traditional weather. Um, so you don't have an issue there. Both have shark fin antennas up top and these white cars, they're both uh, black sort of shark fin antennas there. And uh, that's kind of your styling overview. So these again are your base level trims. So we got 98 people on, we got 63 likes. Do me a favor guys, leave a few extra likes here. I'm gonna go back and see if I can leave you answer if you have any. And like I said, we're gonna continue talking about these cars. I'm gonna find out more about the Sportage moving forward. A lot of you are asking about the hybrid versions. So keep in mind, as you move up through the trim lines, and these are just the entry level trims, as you move up through the trim lines, this one turns into a hybrid. In other words, you cannot get a top trim Tucson, unless it's a hybrid. Whereas in the Sportage, you can get a top trim uh, vehicle without going to a hybrid. So you get a whole bunch of uh, different features in there, uh, panoramic sunroofs, those kinds of things. But uh, you have to go to a hybrid in the higher trims over here. And this one will have a hybrid trim that's separate, which we'll talk about when it's officially released. All right, let's go uh, take some questions here. Potato, potato, Sportage, Sportage. Uh, Potato, potato, sportage, yeah, sportage, sportage, again, if you're American, uh, I know you say sportage, in Canada we say sportage. Okay, um, some says they take the Hyundai any day, other people really like the sportage, so um, there's that. So he says, why isn't the Kia Sportage GT line available in USA and Canada? They just call them different trim lines in different areas of the world, so um, 
you know, they have different trims and different things. Um, interestingly, the Sportage in Canada is made in Korea, but in the States it's made in, um, in Alabama. And I'm not sure, I believe, I believe this, the Canadian um, Tucson's are made in the States as well, but I could be wrong about that. We'll figure out. What colors does 2023 Sportage have available? I'm not seeing on the Canadian website. So if you go to the Canadian website, let's just show you how to do that uh, for a second here. If you go to the Canadian website, I'm actually on the page of the Sportage. Uh, come on, camera. There we go. Uh, so I, there is a Sportage page. It's just not kind of fully done yet. So to find it, you're going to go to the Kia Canada website. You're going to click this Kia logo to get to the main page. Obviously, I was looking at another uh, Sorento earlier. But you're going to click on that uh, Kia page to get to the home page like we are. And then you're going to scroll down here until you see the Sportage. And until they officially add this, uh, that's the only way to get in there. I click that image there and there is a Sportage page. That will eventually be added. If you wanted the web address, it's right here. Um, vehicles 2023 Sportage. So um, there's how to get that. So it is on there, but it doesn't have all the information we need, but hopefully that'll help. All right. Someone says, I'm dying to find out how, does this, how displays work in the EXS. Does it have plastic in between displays or is it glossy finish? Um, if you're wondering about the EX model uh, or any other trim Sportage, We've done the X-Line Limited. We have not done any other version other than the LX that we have today. Uh, we'll have more of that. And of course, we've done every version of the Tucson on this channel. So you can just search for whatever version of the Tucson. Uh, of course, we're Canadian naming. So look for those Canadian names, uh, Kia dots or HyundaiCanada.com uh, to see what the trim lines are. And they're very similar around the world. Um, somebody keeps asking me, why doesn't the Sportage have the heads-up display on a trim? And you asked that earlier. I don't know. I, I don't make the cars. Uh, I don't know why they made that decision. Um, they didn't. So uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, there's lots of reasons why they individual uh, companies have to weigh various things to hit price points to have certain features. So that's what they try to do um, with these cars. And again, these are base trim cars. It's harder to do a base trim car than a top trim car. You can just throw everything on it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I ordered, oh, do you know when the EXS will arrive dealership? So again, EXS is not a model we have in Canada here. So we film in Canada. So that may be why you're looking for something there. Um, so with some vehicles, the hybrid version increases the total horsepower. Was another, so yeah, long story short, the hybrid will increase the horsepower uh, of the Tucson. I haven't seen the official specs on the Canadian Sportage hybrid. Although, like I said, Thursday, I'll see the vehicle and drive the vehicle. And um, I have some assumptions on that car. Uh, we'll have the official information out as early as today. It's going to be the same thing from what I can tell. It'll, so it'll, it'll increase horsepower, increase torque, and increase efficiency, which is just the win-win-win. They used to go with a turbo as a top line, and now they're getting that extra power from the hybrid system, and then you also gain efficiency. So that's going to be an option for people, but of course, hybrids will cost a little bit more, and uh, that'll be something to consider. All right, guys, I think, uh, do I have any incoming uh, inventory list for Hyundai vehicles? So you guys have seen our incoming inventory list for Kia. I think that's something we could do for Hyundai, but I haven't, we haven't done it yet. We're still working out a few kinks on the Kia side, and we'll go with there. Uh, you guys asked about towing capacity just right now, 2023. This one's listed at 2,500 pounds uh, properly equipped. This one's 3,500 pounds properly equipped, which is very odd to me because, like I said, shared platform, shared engine, shared transmission. Uh, so it is interesting that they chose to rate this one quite high and rate this one, you know, very competitive. Uh, but that is something that's interesting. So we're going to leave it there, guys. If you want to see more Sportage stuff, do me a favor. Just let me know what kind of things you want to see. We have more trims coming in. If you want to see more Tucson stuff, we're obviously going to get them back here as well. But we have got a full lineup of Tucsons online already. So feel free to search that up. Uh, just look up Kia Hyundai Channel and whatever Tucson you want or Kia Hyundai Channel Tucson. You'll see all kinds of stuff and we'll go from there. So thanks everybody for watching. We will see you again tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. Thanks again.